Hey everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Um, firstly, I just want to say thanks to those guys that told me to start doing some screencasting. I got requested to do some Final Cut Pro, um, Motion, After Effects, and uh, Photoshop um, you know, tutorials. So uh, thanks so much to those guys because I wasn't even really thinking of that. Um, what I got requested to do as a first one was talk about HDR and, and, and explain it a little bit more. Now, it's actually quite difficult because it is a very broad topic, and um, anyone that anyone that knows about it can will, will say the exact same thing. You know, uh, if you were to talk and explain everything, you'd be here for a day. But what I'll do quickly is I'll go into Photoshop and I'll show you a couple of images that re you know resembles how to start off with doing HDR photography. Now, what you see here is I have five different images of the exact same scene shot on a tripod. Now, as you can see in the information below in the text, this photograph says minus two stops, minus one stop, correct exposure, uh, plus one stop, and plus two stops. Now, what the plus and the minus mean is, is, is initially plus means it's overexposed and minus means it's underexposed. Now, this is the, this is the camera's guesstimation of minus two stops, minus one stop, correct exposure, and so forth. But what HDR allows you to do is combine these five images and get a global change to the photograph and actually have more or less a perfect exposure. Um, our cameras, you know, they're not built to see what our eyes can see, you know, that the technology has not come that far yet. It probably will, but just yet, it, it, you know, our eyes are the most sophisticated, you know, viewing things on the earth because we can see these dramatic changes in light instantaneously. Cameras just aren't that good just yet. They probably will be. but. Anyway, HDR is high dynamic range. Now, what the dynamic range is, is the areas of light to dark. So, in this photograph, it's saying that it's a correct exposure. And, you know, it's not too bad. Down here is a little bit dark, and up there is actually, you know, it's probably a little bit bright. You know, I'd prefer this sky here. It just looks a lot smoother. But this is a camera's, you know, single image, and what it's saying it's going to be the best result that it can give you. But being able to combine the five of these images together gives you a very very different image because you can get all this detail here up in the sky for the dark areas and you can also combine all this light area down here now um, there are several programs on the market that can do this now before you even move into the programs you need to make sure that you get it right in the camera because there's only so much that these programs can correct the first and most important thing is a tripod. You need to make sure that you are set up on a tripod. Otherwise, I don't care how how still you think you can hold your hands, taking five different images, you know, you are bound to get some sort of camera movement or camera shake or whatever. Anyway, second most important thing to me is aperture. Now, a lot of people that do HDR photography shoot in manual and that's that's more or less the best way because um, none of your settings are getting changed. Now you're going to have a constant aperture throughout and you're also going to just be adjusting the uh, shutter speed. Now you don't want to take a photograph uh, for this first exposure at 2.8 and then this image at 3.5 and this one at f5.6 and this one at f8 and this one at f10. You don't want that at all because your focus is going to shift throughout every single image. You want to maintain a constant aperture throughout it. Now, for this photograph, this was shot at f10. In every single photograph here, f10, 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 f10. Now, because it's a landscape and it drifts off into the background, f10 for me is a perfect aperture because it's getting it's getting everything I need to be in focus. If I was to shoot at f2.8, my focus would sh would actually fall off quite quickly. Um, anyway, those are the to me those are the most two important things. The third one is. If your camera has bracketing, then use it because it gives actually a very, very good um, result. You know, it, it changes. Usually, when you set up bracketing, you can say, okay, for each image, I want there to be third stop different, half stop, or a full stop. To me, full stop differences are the best. Um, you know, this from this image to this image, that's one full stop of light. From this image to this image, that's one full stop of light, and vice versa. You can set it to a third or half, but you know if you've got a full stop, then you've got the most amount of um, you know data and image to you know to really to play with. Um, the fourth thing that I would say is shoot in raw. 
This way, you're going to get the most amount of data in your image. If you, sh if you shoot in JPEG, this is a JPEG versus RAW argument. This is a whole different thing. But you're gonna, you know, you're gonna throw away a lot of information that that could benefit you. Having said that, moving into the programs, um, there's two that I mainly use. One is HDRFX Pro. I'll put it. I'll put it. Um, the, the icon up on the top window here. So it's HDRFX Pro, and also Photomatics. Now. Those two are probably the most common ones at the moment. Now there is a whole different bunch. You know, it's like it's like any photo editing software. If somebody makes one, there's going to be another one that comes out a week later. It's like Photoshop's not the only thing that can edit photos. Everybody everybody thinks it is, but it started in paint. Obviously, Photoshop's the leading you know leading industry at the moment, but it started out in paint. Now. What I'll do, what I'll do now is I will move into HDRFX Pro. Now this is this is my personal favorite mainly because it's got so it's firstly it's got a really good layout. It's actually very very crisp. You've got um, presets that you can save. So if you you you, you takes um, you make adjustments and you like them, you can save it as a preset and do it to another photo six months down the track. To me, that's awesome. Um, but the layout is quite good. Uh, this is done by Nick Software. They also do a whole bunch of other plugins for Photoshop and um, separate programs just like this. So they're really cool. Check them out. But the only thing I don't like about this program, which kind of, which kind of, you know, contradicts myself into what I said before, it doesn't accept RAW. Photomatix does. So that's a bit of a bummer for me. But either way, I'll still shoot in RAW. And, I, and by the the time I'm I'm done with my images, I have to convert it into JPEG because this is the, that's the only uh, well not the only but that's the format that this this program accepts. I don't know why they didn't allow it to to import raw, but you know whatever. Anyway, we'll start off importing um, these images. All right, so JPEG, and these are the five images there. Only the text has been removed. So I'll import these. Now this takes a couple of minutes just to load all the files on it. Very quick. Okay, so what it asks for here is the exposure values. Now, it, uh, this is another part of Photomatix that I like. It really kind of does it for you. But it's basically saying, okay, in this image, what was you know what was the stop difference between the next? So as as you saw in the text, this was minus two stops underexposed. This one is minus one stop overexposed. Zero means um, you know it's correctly exposed. Uh, this is plus w one overexposed, and this is plus two overexposed. You hit OK. It's going to start aligning the images. It's going to start merging, and what you'll notice is the first result you get automatically is better. Um, but there's a lot more that you can do to it. So it's just going through its thing. Again, I won't go over everything today because HDR is is huge. Um, you know, a, a lot of people use it for a lot of different things. You know, the first thing off the top of my mind is when you see in real estate magazines and you think, "Wow, how does this photograph look so perfect?" It's HDR. What they've done is they've taken a photo, whether they're inside the inside the house looking out, to be able to get. Um, the perfect exposure, they use HDR. So if they're in a kitchen and they're looking outside and there's a lot of bright light coming in, to get that light outside to be balanced with what you see inside, they use HDR. They might take three, five, seven, or nine images, blend them together, and you know be able to get an image that looks perfect with a, a good exposure inside and a good exposure outside, rather than having you know this blaring light coming through. Anyway, automatically what you can see is this photograph right here is not too bad it's probably it's probably close to this exposure here or probably yeah probably close to this exposure here but the real fun starts when you understand how much power you have over this because essentially what it is is five images that have been blended together so that's five times more powerful in what you can do to it so Another thing about this program I like is it's got all the all the templates and the presets down the side. So you know straight away if I click on someone somebody's already done this at Nick Software. I click on that, and that looks cool straight away. You zoom right in, you know, and it's got these different colors and the structure is just you know it's it's really different and it's really cool. So you can 
by all means just use the presets and not have to do any work at all but what I tend to do is I'll always click on default go back to the stock image and play with it from there now uh, over here in this side panel is all the things you can do to it. We won't play with all of them today because I'll be here for a couple of hours if I do. I'll just go over these global adjustments. Now what global adjustments means is it's happening to the entire image. You can put control points. So in the middle, okay I'll, sh I'll show you quickly. A control point is just um, a small selection of the image that's going to get adjusted. So for instance I can take this this one area here and put it up the top there and you can see that the exposure has been pulled up pull it down and make it darker and you can do that to any part of the image now I usually don't use control points unless I'm spending a lot of time and try and get an image perfect but global adjustments usually does a pretty good job now straight away for me so I move to the structure and as soon as you start pulling that up makes a huge difference already. It makes the image look sharper, but what it's really doing is it's it's defining it's defining the lines and it's defining blacks. So it's straight away it makes quite a big difference. And anyway, we'll go over this quickly. For me I'd pull the exposure up just a little bit, pull some saturation, uh, pull the whites down, pull the warmth up just a little bit, and probably put the structure up a little bit further. And you know what you got to be careful of is going too far. You know, if you went something like that and something like that and something like that, that looks that looks fake. You know, you don't want to go that far. So you got to be careful. You know, you got to be careful when you put it out there. I mean, obviously you can you can edit it however you want and upload it. But if you want people to take you seriously, then you need to um, you need to lay off heavy editing. Um, and and that that's what I've learned over the years when I first got into Photoshop. You know my images were they were over edited and people could tell straight away the best thing to do is to do subtle edits um, that gives you know uh, th there's a term that Jared Pollan uses which is boomification it basically says your images are shot flat but you can make them look so much better um, so yeah so that's anyway look straight away I'll bring that down a little bit, bring the blacks up just a little bit to give it a bit more contrast and tonal compression, bring that up just a tiny bit as well uh, method strength and there you go straight away, you look at that image you've got, you know, it'll probably take the warmth down a little bit so it's a bit more blue also the exposure down just a little bit alright cool straight away you can see is we've got some nice detail in the sky if I wanted to add a control point I could bring down this section here to because that's a little bit overexposed, but I could add a control point in there and take down that section's exposure. But when you verse this image here to this image, big difference, turn off the text, big difference straight away. The ground looks better, the sky looks better, the overall image has so much more impact. And this is this is a very, very high quality file. It saves out as a TIFF. It'll save it close to 100 megabytes. So if you want to go and put this to print, it'll be perfect. Um, you know, and from here, you can move straight into Photoshop and start mucking around with it then. Anyway, this is a quick overview on, you know, Nick software. I recommend checking that out because there's a lot of cool stuff that they do. Um, HDR effects is one of them. They do a bunch of stuff. They do complete packages with different effects and presets. Um, but yeah, anyway guys, I hope this helps. If you have anything uh, that you want me to talk about or any more requests, let me know. Um, leave a comment below and I'll hit up a video. Anyway guys, thanks heaps for that. Alright, have a good one.